Hi everyone and welcome back to Stitchy Bee. I'm Cheryl Temple and this week I'll be talking about how we can store PDF sewing patterns. Um, but before we go on to that, um, I'll just explain what I'm wearing. This is yet another <laughs> New Look 6217 top. I made this ages ago. In fact, I made one for my best friend for her birthday and I liked it so much that I made myself one. So um, it's a really easy top to wear, super lightweight cotton. I think it's a seersucker this, but I've actually ironed it quite a lot, so I can't see the little dimples anymore. Um, so yeah, really love these, they're, they're super versatile. Um, and they've got a cute, I've put a cute little daisy button at the back, you can see there. Um, so yeah, really nice. So if you're anything like me, you've got a, quite a good collection of PDF patterns now with all the lovely designs that are coming out. And of course, we've got the problem of where to put them and how to store them. So apart from rolling them up into a big ball and pushing them into a drawer and forgetting about them, um, which I've done in the past, um, I found a couple of really good ways um, to organise them so that you know exactly what you've got and so that they look nice too. Okay, so the first way um, I've discovered is a simple clear plastic envelope with a printout of your actual pattern popped inside along with the pattern pieces. So these are great because you've got all your bits in one place and you could keep them in a nice basket in your sewing room if you've got space or pop them in a drawer and they're kept pristine until the next time that you want them. Um, the problem with this method is when you take them out, I find, because I print out on A4 paper like most people and it's pretty reasonable quality, it's quite thick, therefore it creases quite badly. So if I wanted to use this again, I would definitely iron the reverse and make sure that they're flat because it does make a difference if you're battling with bends and creases and folds. So it's another step in the the process that you probably don't need to do. Um, it's fine for once in a blue moon, but I thought, what is the other option? So I've done some research on the web and I've found, I've looked at what the pros do. So the pattern designers for the big fashion houses, they all store their patterns in a certain way. Um, so what they do is they have um, what's called pattern hooks and they clip all their pattern pieces together, I'll pop a picture here so you can see, and they hang them all up uh, in all the different sizes and then they've got them hanging perfect, they don't need to iron them, and they can pop them on a rail in their studios and work that way. And um, What you could also do is, if you were going down that route, is to buy some Swedish tracing paper, which is kind of like a th very thin fabric that you can actually sew on as well. Um, so it, you can use it for twirls and then you can create a fabric version of those patterns and hang them up. Um, really it's not the cheapest way of doing it. I had a quick look at pattern hooks and um, price wise and in this country they're quite expensive because they're not that readily available. There are a couple of places that sell them um, but in the US they're more readily available um, but again, they're not that cheap. And for a home sewer, I'm always looking for ways to save money. So I've worked out my own version. Okay, so this is my version. Now, um, what I bought here was, it's an over door bar. And I say door, it's not wide enough for a room door. It actually goes over a cupboard door. So I don't have enough room for a rail in my sewing room in here. So I bought this and it was about seven or eight pounds and you can actually extend it so it can adjust to fit different size doors. And um, it's meant, um, for its primary use is to hold tea towels and things in a kitchen or slot mugs on and things like that. And um, I've also seen similar to this in Ikea. There's lots of rails like this that you can hang stuff from um, for your kitchen in, in that kitchen department. So keep an eye out for these. Now the hooks are actually bought in a pack of, I bought 30 of these, I'll show you a close up. So they've got a little bobble on one end and a, a, a sharper end if you like. So on here I've popped the sharper end on the top and I've kept the bobble lower to stop the pattern slipping off. 
um, and this is working really well. I've just started um, putting my favourite patterns on here so that when I want to recreate something they're all kept nice and the patterns that I'm not likely to use again I'll, I'll pop in the, the plastic sleeves. Um, okay the first one um, that I used and tried this with was my tunic pattern from last week so as you can see it's all um, traced out on brown paper. So the way that the pros actually, the pro sewers, um, actually put their patterns together is they gather them together with the largest piece at the back and the smallest one at the front and then you can see all the individual pattern pieces laid out like that. And then what I did, so I gathered them all together, all, all neat, and then I used a single hole punch to clip through. You could use a regular hole punch and hold it at an angle, but I, this is a bit more accurate and it's, it's only a few pounds. There's a right way and a wrong way to use this. So you need to make sure the paper goes under that little bar there rather than the other way, otherwise it'll chew up your paper, just in case you get one. And then also I bought some hole reinforcers. So you see those little white reinforcers? These remind me of school. Um, so when we used to use folders and pop paper in, we used to have these to protect the pages from tearing when you're flicking through all the time. So I thought it would be quite useful on these to buy those. And these ones are actually plastic coated, so they'll last, they won't tear at all if you're constantly getting them in and out. So when I put this one together, I just grabbed what I found in my office and just got some string and tied that and that's all held together nicely it's not going anywhere and um, but as I was looking at my other patterns I thought what else can I use so you can actually buy a pattern pin which is like a really long um, safety pin that you could thread through and then it clips and again I'm trying to keep costs low so I found by sheer accident an alternative so the last time I changed my shower curtain at home, I had these in there, which I didn't actually need. So you've probably seen these at home or definitely in hotels. And this clips open. And then I thought that would be brilliant for storing patterns on. So I did exactly that. And this keeps them all nice together and they're not going anywhere if it slips off or if a gust of wind blows and they move at least they're all in one piece and they're not going anywhere and then it's simply a case of hooking that on there and then hooking that onto your chosen bar so i'm really enjoying this way of storing them and the best part in this small space i've got here is it doesn't take up much room and it's really nice to see your patterns out because it just inspires you when you walk past you think yeah I must make another one of those and so on rather than all tucked in a, a drawer or a, a filing cabinet so yeah give that a go and um, there's probably loads of ways to store PDFs but these are my two favorites um, and it's nice to have things up in your sewing space and I've seen lots of pegboards and beautifully laid out um, sewing spaces so you could even have these as part of that or I fit a little bar to those and, and have them on the wall. Um, so yeah, give it a go. So that's it from me for this week. Just a little quickie, um, I hope it's been useful. Um, let me know if you've got any other ideas about PDF storage as well. I'm always up for, for new, new ideas. So next week, I'm gonna be talking about a major fabric haul that I've got. So thinking about autumn and winter and also beyond and you know, planning for spring as well. So it's not all just about warm clothes for me. Um, when you sat working from home, you don't wanna to be too hot anyway. So it's about a couple of fabrics that would make really good pieces um, to wear any time of the year really. Um, so yeah, hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching and subscribing and I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye.